Did Maddie Nottage just threaten me? She just came out publicly and gave a public decree to anyone, a warning that blindness will come upon them. Now, what she's talking about is people that are on social media that are reacting to her videos and using the Bible to refute her false teaching and whatnot. Okay, now I want y'all to look at this. You people on social media, take it as a warning. The spirit of blindness will be put upon you, will be sent to you. So there's like a warning. Stop mentioning my name. Stop, um, you know, talking about my doctrine. Stop using the word of God to refute my teachings. Stop using the word of God to, you know, refute my antics and my theatrics. Like, it's just ridiculous. Like, the Bible tells us to do these things and to refute false teaching. Like, let's just keep listening. Leave God's prophets. I don't care whether they're in Africa. I don't care whether they're in China. I don't care whether they're in Korea. I don't care whether they're in the Caribbean or they're in the United States of America. If that person is a true authentic prophet of God, leave them alone. Absolutely garbage. Why? Because the Bible says in Galatians chapter 1, verse 8, but even if we or any angel from heaven should preach to you another gospel contrary to that which we originally preached to you, let him be condemned to con condemned to destruction. And that's in Galatians chapter 1, verse 8 in the Amplified Version. Apostle Paul is saying, even if I or any of us, the disciples, preach another doctrine contrary to the doctrine, contrary to the doctrine of Christ, let us be condemned to destruction. So no one is exempt, including myself. No one is exempt from being exposed for false teaching. No one is. And we can't take these things personal because it's the word of God. It's not like your personal life is being exposed. But if what you are doing is contrary to the word of God, completely contrary in context, it must be challenged. And you can't come out here and just start threatening people that they're going to go blind because they are refuting false teaching. That is absurd. God will deal with his own prophets. Take your mind off of her. Take your hand off of her. The, watch this woman. The sign of the judgment of God will be blindness. This is witchcraft. The Bible says, bless those who curse you. And also talks about, you know, there are people who bless out of the same mouth they curse from. You understand me? Um, now, the Bible says this in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 20. As for those who pers persist in sin, rebuke them in the presence of all so that the rest may stand in fear. Titus chapter 2, verse 15. Declare these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority, let no one disregard you. Timothy 4 2, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. Okay? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 through 17, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof for correction and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So we are supposed to refute false teaching. Maddie does not own the Bible. The words that she speaks are supposed to be the words of Jesus. They're supposed to come from the Bible. So if she's being exposed or anything like that, it's coming from the doctrine that she's preaching that's contrary to the word of God. It's not her personal life. You understand me? Uh, Luke chapter 17, verse 3 through 4, pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you 70 times in a day and turns to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive him. Now, if anyone preaches false doctrine, we forgive them, but they must be rebuked. It is like, yo, this, it's not only about, oh, this is not true. We're really talking about doctrines of demons, dangerous things that promote another gospel, promote witchcraft and whatnot. You understand me? But I don't see any of the apostles getting mad when people call them a false prophet. 
Apostle Paul was saying like how some people don't even believe he's a he's he's an apostle and whatnot, right? And I don't see any of the apostles, prophets of old, cursing people because they challenged their teachings. There was someone named. Um, there were two people that shipwrecked their faith in the Bible, and their name is Hymenius and Alexander. And they were once walking with Apostle Paul. They were once believers, and they shipwrecked their faith from going from the true doctrine of Christ to a false doctrine. And that is in First Timothy chapter one, verse nineteen through twenty. It says, "Holding faith and a good conscience, by rejecting this, some have made shipwreck of their faith." among whom are Hymenius and Alexander, whom I have handed over, to, handed over to Satan so that they may learn not to blaspheme. So they were once in the faith and they shipwrecked their faith and they started preaching a false doctrine. They started teaching doctrines of demons. Second Timothy chapter four, verse 15 through 16, beware of him yourself for he is strongly opposed for he strongly opposed our message. At, at my first defense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. May it not be charged against them. So Apostle Paul is talking about Hymenius and Alexander. They opposed the, the, uh, the doctrine of Apostle Paul, the proper doctrine. Okay. Now we are supposed to we are supposed to warn the body of Christ of people that oppose the word of God. We defend the word of God, not any prophet, apostle, absolutely no way. That is a idolatry. And it's not God that just deals with his prophets. No, no, no. Every prophet is, is accountable to the word of God. It is 100% accountable to the word of God. The Bible also says this in, in, in um, 1 Corinthians 2.15, the person with the spirit makes judgments about all things, but such a person is not subject to merely human judgments. John 7, 24, do not judge according to the appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. Now, some of you may say in Matthew 7, it says, you know, we should not judge. You quote one verse and you don't know what it means. You don't know what it means. The context of that verse, if you keep reading, it's saying, do not judge when you're being a hypocrite. Because with the same measure that you judge, you'll be judged also. First, take the plank out of your own eye, then go and help that person out, then go judge them. So if if you are doing witchcraft and you're telling someone, and you're telling someone, and you're telling someone, excuse me, and you're telling someone, this is witchcraft. This is witchcraft. Repent. You're going to go to hell. You're going to be judged with the same measure that you judge them because you didn't repent of your witchcraft. And you can't help someone in their sexual morality or in their witchcraft when you're doing the same thing. So the Bible says, before you judge, Matthew 7, ju uh, when it says, judge not, re keep reading the next verses. It will explain what it's talking about. It's all about hypocrisy. And that's what we have to understand. Paul the Lucha, he just said to Elamus, be blind from this day forward. She all right. Be blind from this day forward. So some people in your family, don't worry, I don't have to pray. See, the reason why I don't want to answer some of these people out there, because first of all, I'm a servant of God, I'm a prophet of God. And if I answer the wrong thing, some of them will never rise again. They'll never rise again. So I say some of them will never rise again. They will remain impotent. I say the one I say to you. Leave God's prophet. Leave God. God will judge his prophets. No one to go on the ways of God. In Jesus' name. Now, now that word impotent, it's really meaning about, it, it means uh, to be weak, useless. You're incapable to rise. I don't know if she's talking about your deathbed, infirmity. You know, you're lame. You know, maybe your destiny has been attacked and you can't rise. This is full-blown witchcraft. Okay, now I'm going to say this. The Bible says this in Proverbs chapter 26, verse 2, a curse that is causeless will not land on its intended victim. And I'm not going to assume that this is, you know, about me, right? Obviously, I've made a few videos that have gone viral um, about some of the stuff she has been teaching and demonstrating and whatnot. But every video I've done, I have backed what I say with the word of God, and I make sure it's not personal. Because I make it about doctrine, and I I can call it the same person over and over again. As long as it's a, it, as long as it is about doctrine, 
I'm good. You feel me? But there are some people that are entitled and they're in ministry and they're like, no one can say anything about me. No one can refute my doctrine. No one can call me a false prophet. Listen, y'all can call me false all day. I don't care. People come call me false. I'm not going to curse you. I'm not going to try to fight you. You are allowed to have your own judgments, your own your own convictions, your own interpretations. God bless you. And we think I'm false. God bless you. But I'm not going to curse you. I'm not going to give you warnings and threaten you and stuff like that. Absolutely not. Because you may have certain interpretation differences in me and convictions that, that are different than me that you're just like, you know, I just have a, the conviction to stay away from him because he believes in deliverance. That's totally fine. You understand me? But when it comes to literal sorcery, when it comes to things that are just not biblical and they're leading people to rituals and items, we call it out and the Bible is our foundation. We can argue all day, but let's argue the scriptures. I'm not no theologian and I don't like debates, but when things are full-blown witchcraft, I'll debate with you straight up in context. Let's, let's, let's dive through the scriptures when you're quoting the Old Testament. Let's, let, let's get it in context. I'm not as scared of no witchcraft. I'm not as scared of no threats or anything like that. I make things about doctrine. And there are certain people that are so upset when you call it their false doctrine or their antics or their theatrics. And I don't understand why. Right? Because you're you're posting these teachings, you're going public, you're doing all of these things, and you're using the word of God to defend what you're doing, but you're abusing scripture out of context. The strength of what I do is rooted in the word of God. Do you understand me? It's rooted in the word of God and my protection comes from the Lord. You understand me? I don't fear no man. I fear God. All right. And just wanted to share this with you guys because someone actually sent it to me. You know what I mean? And listen, there have been people that have gotten super mad at me for some things, you know, like big names that have gotten mad at me, you know, and it's just. I'm telling you, in this season, you know, these folks be responding subliminally. You know, I know John Ramirez one time called me out in the church, got upset and saying he was going to come to my house and pop a cap. It's like people are so sensitive when it comes to their doctrine, their reputation, because they're they're being held accountable and they don't like that. They want to be held perfect. No, not, not held perfect, but they want to be viewed in such a good way. No, I'm untouchable. No one could say anything about me. No one this, no one that, you know, although they'll, they'll try to threaten you for a lawsuit for refuting their false teaching, posting their own videos and reacting to it. Bizarre. Make a million videos about me. Expose me. Say what you want. Disagree with me. It is okay. You feel me? But anyways, guys. It's just, this is this is not of God. You cannot just threaten people, threaten to curse people with blindness because they call you out, because they refute your teachings, because they they use the word of God to go against your fiat tricks that are not biblical. That's That's never a reason to speak blindness on people and to say that they'll never raise up or get up ever again. And she doesn't have the power to do that. Now, if if you guys have open doors in your life, yeah, but make sure you repent of your sins and know your authority in Christ and bind it and break it in the name of Jesus. We cancel that, that word curse in Jesus' name. 